All right, so today I want to cover 10 things you should consider when buying a pet snake on a budget. And if you're buying a snake as a pet, it's a lot different than if you're actually buying snakes to breed, because if you actually breed snakes, you're making money and putting that money back into the hobby. And in most cases, I'd say you'd make a little bit on the side, but if you're actually keeping them as a pet, it kind of digs into your budget. You know, if you're, especially if you're working a day job or if you're on a limited budget, you definitely need to keep some things in mind before for buying a pet snake. All right, so the first thing that you should consider is the size of the rodent matters. And let me tell you, when it comes to rodents, the bigger the rodent, the more expensive the rodent is. And essentially what that translates to is the bigger the snake you get, the more expensive it's gonna to be to actually keep that snake. As a matter of fact, if you actually get into reticulated pythons, I'm pretty much running up against this with my two retics. You know, the really, I should actually transition over to rabbits instead of feeding them rats, but I have a a lot of really big mature rats for my rodent breeding operation and that's essentially what I bought my reticulated pythons for to kind of use up my older rats and if you actually switch to rabbits instead of rats it can be extremely expensive as a matter of fact I was kind of looking at how much rabbits cost uh, you know if you actually buy frozen thawed rabbits have them shipped to your door it's about between 15 and 20 dollars a piece for each rabbit it is pretty expensive keeping a big reticulated python Versus if you bought something like a really small king snake, it could be extremely inexpensive. You know, buying little pinky mice or little tiny mice instead of some of the bigger rats. And it's, it's I would say it's probably one of the biggest things you need to keep in consideration, especially in the long term if you have a lot of reticulated pythons that are really small and they get to the point where say if you had like five or six retics that were eating rabbits or even something a little bit bigger, let me tell you the food for those snakes can break the bank. That's one thing you should really keep in mind when buying a pet snake. All right, so the second thing to consider is the cost of the rodents, and you can actually save money depending on where you buy your rodents. So for example, if you actually buy rodents from a pet store, I'd say you're probably paying a premium. Probably that's the most expensive place to buy rodents. You know, I'd say there's, there's other places you can buy them. You can actually go to Rodent Pro, one of these wholesalers that ship them in bulk directly to your door. The problem is, is I kind of ran into this when I first got it into snakes. I got a whole bunch of rodents and I shipped them to my door and I was like, oh yeah, these rodents are really cheap. The problem is, is there's a shelf life on rodents. I'd say probably six months to a year, depending on what temperature you keep them and how you package them and everything. Pretty much after a year, your rodents expire and they're not really that good. The problem is if you get a whole bunch of rodents and they last you for over a year, you pretty much have to throw away a lot of your rodents and then start over and that's kind of what I did but at the very beginning I had a lot of rodents that lasted me beyond my first year and I thought it was a good deal and then I got pretty much to the expiration date and I realized it wasn't such a good deal the other place you can actually buy rodents is at a reptile show there's a lot of reptile shows that actually sell frozen rodents probably the best place to buy them because you can just buy a few at a time and you don't have to pay for shipping and then on on the other hand, if you actually get live rodents, pretty much the only place you can get live rodents, you sometimes you can get them at a show, but I'd say in most cases, you actually have to go to a reptile store to buy live rodents, unless you can find a local breeder. All right, so the third thing to consider is the cost of your bedding. And let me tell you, bedding can be pretty expensive, and it really depends on which bedding you go with. There's cheaper alternatives. I pretty much go with a coconut husk chip bedding for all my snakes, and I find it's a little bit more expensive, and in some cases it's a lot more expensive, but it really cuts down on the amount of work that I need to do for my snakes. I used to actually go to a paper substrate, and if you go to a paper substrate, I'd say it's probably the cheapest way to Go. but the problem is is what you're saving and betting you're spending on maintenance you're running after the tubs trying to keep them all clean when the, let me tell you with a paper substrate there's essentially nothing that absorbs the odors so I noticed when I had paper substrate on a, a level like I am with like a hundred snakes in here you could definitely smell the snakes which you definitely wouldn't smell them if you're using a coconut husk and some people use like an aspen chip or you know like a 
cypress mulch. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can actually use. I'd say it, for the cheapest one, you could use like an unprinted newspaper. But I'd say in most cases, if you want the least amount of maintenance and the most odor absorption, you could go with some kind of a coconut husk substrate. All right, so number four for snakes on a budget, you can actually save some money if you wash your own deli cups. And this is for people that are on a little bit bigger of a scale and have a rack system. So the rack system behind me actually has tubs that slide in and out of the rack, and every tub has a spot for a deli cup to hold the water. And it's it's really easy. You can actually just, you know, they're really meant to be disposable. You just swap out the deli cups when you're changing water, and that way you don't have to spend time washing all the water bowls in all your tubs and when I first started out in ball pythons I would actually wash my own water bowls my own deli cups and I got to the point where I didn't really have enough time to go through and wash them all and essentially what I did is I saved them all and got a really big garbage bag full of all these deli cups and then I started asking around saying hey you know looking for people that would be interested in working for me washing deli cups and sure enough I can actually get someone to wash for less than I'm buying brand new deli cups, which is pretty awesome. It's a win-win situation. If you want to save a little bit of money and save the planet, you can actually find someone to wash your deli cups. Alright, so another way you can save money is you can actually buy plants from a craft store instead of buying them from the pet store. In a lot of cases you'll pay pennies on a dollar if you're getting them from a craft store. Or what you can do is you can go to a reptile show and a lot of times they'll actually sell plants at a discount at the reptile shows. But you know, I'd say for the probably the biggest selection of really cool plants, you can pick them up from the pet store. I just bought some for my geckos. I think I was paying like 15 or 20 dollars a plant for some of those fake plants. They're really awesome plants. I doubt you could get something that awesome anywhere else, but if you're looking for doing snakes on a budget, you could probably get your fake plants from a craft store. All right, so for number six, another way to save money is to buy heat mats that heat from underneath instead of a heat lamp heating from above. And the heat lamps, I'd say, probably use a little bit more electricity, but probably the main thing for heat lamps is that they'll go through expensive bulbs. And let me tell you, replacing bulbs for heat lamps can be pretty expensive. And a lot of times they don't really last that long. Every few months you're replacing bulbs. And as a matter of fact, I have a heat lamp on my tortoise upstairs. I think the last lamp lasted about six months. This one's almost going on a year, so it really depends on the lamp, and you really don't want to jar them very much. You know, avoid the impact on some of those heat lamps because sometimes if you just drop them, the lamp can burn out. You could break that filament inside of the lamp. So if you really want to save money, if it's possible with your setup and your type of snake, go for a heat mat instead of a lamp from above. All right, so for number seven, here's another trick I've been doing from the very beginning, and that is I am actually selling my used coconut husk substrate as landscaping material. And especially if you're on a level like I am and have, you know, big garbage bags full of coconut husk, it looks really good at the end of a month, but it starts getting, I'd say it doesn't really smell very good, and it starts getting a little bit moldy at the end of a month. Smells a little musty, but it's perfectly fine for landscaping material. And let me tell you, if you advertise on Craigslist selling used reptile bedding as landscaping material, I've had regular people buy it month after month during the summer months, and I recoup almost all of my cost for my bedding selling it as landscaping material. All right, so for number eight, you need to consider the cost of the snake. And I'd say the cost of the snake varies considerably depending on where you actually get the snake. So I'd say if for probably the most expensive snake, you go to like a reptile store or a pet store or something like that. But I'd say at the pet store, if you want a snake today and probably the best variety of snakes and you're willing to pay the price, you can go to a reptile store, get a really cool snake today, but you're gonna pay some money. If you're on a budget, I'd say 
probably the best place to go is maybe wait for an expo. You probably have a lot more choices, maybe a little better price at an expo in some cases. But if you actually go to somewhere like your local Craigslist, you can actually get a snake for quite a bit less. As a matter of fact, I just went to Craigslist. I was looking for, for ball pythons. I found quite a few over there for like, you know, 50 bucks or 100 bucks. That includes the snake plus the entire setup. So you get the, the whole setup with the snake in addition to just the snake, which can be a real deal. But I found, you know, mostly over on Craigslist, the problem is, is I would say at least half of the setups that I saw over there are not appropriate for the type of snake. I actually went over there and found a ball python that they were keeping in a glass tank with no hides in there whatsoever. You definitely need some kind of a dark hide that the snake can go into to kind of retreat. You know, ball pythons especially like to hide. It really depends on the snake versus, you know, if, if you have like a, a king snake versus a ball python, it's a different setup. Or if you have like an arboreal snake that kind of hangs out just on a limb above, you know, kind of suspended above everything else in the aquarium. You really have to make sure if you're getting something over on Craigslist that it has the appropriate setup. All right, so another thing you have to keep in mind when you're looking at snakes on a budget, and that is the cost of the enclosure. And I'd say in most cases, the cost of the enclosure is actually gonna be more money than the cost of the snake. And it's kind of interesting. I've sold quite a few snakes at reptile shows. People come up to the table and they're like, oh yeah, yeah I wanna buy that snake for a couple hundred bucks. And then after they get it, they're like, oh, I need an enclosure. What do I need to do to set this snake up? And they don't realize, you know, the cost of the enclosure can be really expensive depending on what you're actually getting you know some people are actually buying like an aquarium type of enclosure and then you need a hide and substrate and a heat net and a heat controller maybe a heat lamp and it just goes on and on and you start adding this stuff up and then you actually need rodents on top of that and by the time you're done I can almost guarantee that the cost of the enclosure is gonna be more than the cost of the snake in most cases and there's ways you can actually save on that you can actually build your own or you can get a used enclosure or you can look around on Craigslist for some used setups that's probably the cheapest option or you can just go to the pet store get a really nice fancy setup and the one thing to keep in mind is usually your setups usually in most cases are one-time costs and the price of the snake it's not really the the cost figured into a long-term budget I'd say the long-term budget is usually like your substrate and your rodents some of the consumables that you just kind of go through on a long-term basis. All right, so for number 10, one of the things that broke my budget over the last few years, and that is chasing the enclosure size as the snake grows. And this is especially true with reticulated pythons that have a really large potential size and they grow extremely fast. I actually bought my reticulated pythons as almost hatchling size, and I moved them up. It seemed like after just a few months, I was moving them up to bigger tubs and bigger tubs. Finally moved them into a boa tub. And then Lucy, she's about 100 pounds. I finally moved her out of my pool table in a six foot enclosure and that enclosure cost about a thousand dollars and she's almost outgrown that she's about 17 feet long I don't even know what to do with her anymore she almost needs a whole room by herself it's pretty amazing chasing the enclosure size and it's I would say it's kind of disheartening you know if you spend you know 800 bucks on a boa tub and then they outgrow that and then you spend another thousand dollars on a six foot enclosure and they outgrow that it can really add up really really quickly buying all these enclosures and if even if you look at ball pythons you look at something like this snake around my neck this is Bobby my bamboo ball python going into a shed you can tell he's definitely kind of graying out a little bit getting a little bit grumpy choking me out a few times in this video but if you, if you, if you look at a snake like this they start out as hatchlings and a lot of people say oh yeah for a ball python hatchling you can actually put them in a glass enclosure with a little hide the problem is is, is they get bigger and bigger and bigger and pretty soon you'd need a really big hide for a ball python like this. Can you imagine trying to fit Bobby in a big hide in a glass aquarium? You'd have to have a really big glass aquarium, you know, a really big hide. I would say he's probably as big as maybe a 10 gallon tank, you know, just for the hide itself. So I really like rack systems because the whole tub acts as the hide versus if you were trying to put him in a 
glass aquarium and then try to chase the snake size by keep replacing the hide. You can actually get something like an ARS 7010, put them in there as a hatchling, maybe put a little hide in a big tub like that, and then slowly grow, you know, increase the size of the hide as the snake grows, and then pretty soon just take away the hide itself. Bobby is just going crazy today and shit, kind of choking me out. <laughs> crazy snake. But I'd say that's one of the, probably one of the biggest things that you have to keep in mind is your snake grows, you have to chase the enclosure size. All right, so there you have it. Those are 10 things you should consider when buying a snake on a budget. And I'm gonna leave you with some aerial footage from my drone. I actually took my drone. I drove an hour west of my location into the mountains of Denver, stopped at a few places, got some really cool videos of some of the scenery in Colorado. It's pretty awesome. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.